John Carter awoke with a start, his head pounding and his vision blurry. The last thing he remembered was a bright light and the sensation of being lifted off his feet. Now, he found himself in an unfamiliar place, surrounded by the harsh metallic scent and the cold, unyielding texture of metal walls. The cell was cramped, with a single dim light flickering overhead. As he tried to gather his bearings, a loud, grating voice broke the silence. Welcome, human, sneered a large, scaly creature with green skin and multiple eyes. The alien's voice was filled with a mix of disdain and amusement. You must be the new inmate. John's heart raced, but he squared his shoulders, refusing to show fear. Where am I? Who are you? He demanded, trying to keep his voice steady. The creature laughed, a guttural sound that echoed through the cell block. This is the galactic jail, it said. You're in for a rough time, human. John's mind raced. Galactic jail? The concept was almost too fantastical to grasp. Yet here he was. He scanned the cell, noting the heavy bars and the advanced locking mechanism that he had no hope of tampering with. There was no escape, not yet. As the alien continued to mock him, John took stock of his situation. His clothes were tattered, remnants of his former life, but his body, though bruised and battered, was still strong. He could feel the weight of every muscle, every scar, each a testament to the battles he had fought and survived back on Earth. Name's Grook, the alien said, finally introducing itself. And you better learn fast, human. This place isn't kind to the weak. John stared at Grook, his mind racing with possibilities. He needed to learn the rules of this place, and he needed to learn them fast. I'm John, he replied, and I'm not weak. Grook's eyes narrowed, and a slow smile spread across its face, revealing rows of sharp teeth. We'll see about that, human, we'll see. John quickly realized that the galactic jail was unlike any human prison he had ever imagined. As he was led out of his cell into the common area, he was met with a cacophony of sounds and a dizzying array of beings. The other inmates were a mix of species, each more bizarre and intimidating than the last. Some were towering giants with multiple limbs, others were small but radiated an aura of menace. Fresh meat! hissed a reptilian alien with a flicking tongue as John passed by. The creature's eyes glinted with malice, and its companions laughed, a chorus of sinister chuckles. John ignored the taunts and found a corner to sit in. He needed to understand the rules of this place, and fast. His military training kicked in, and he began observing his surroundings, noting the routines and hierarchies. The guards, heavily armed and impassive, patrolled the area with a cold efficiency. They seemed indifferent to the inmate's behavior, only intervening when absolutely necessary. As he watched, he noticed a group of inmates congregating in the center of the common area. They were larger, more confident, and the other prisoners gave them a wide berth. It was clear they were the ones in control, the alpha predators of this bizarre ecosystem. John's thoughts were interrupted by a commotion nearby. A small, wiry alien with large, inquisitive eyes was being harassed by a much larger, brutish creature. The smaller alien cowered, trying to protect a small makeshift device it was clutching. Give it here, Zarn, the brute demanded, its voice a low growl. Zarn, as the small alien was apparently called, shook its head vigorously. No, it's mine, I need it. The brute snarled and raised a massive fist ready to strike. Without thinking, John intervened. He stepped forward and grabbed the brute's arm, stopping the blow midair. Leave him alone, John said, his voice calm but firm. The brute turned its gaze to John, a look of surprise quickly turning to anger. Who do you think you are, human? John met the creature's eyes unflinchingly. Someone who doesn't like bullies. For a moment, the brute seemed taken aback. But then it laughed, a booming, humorless sound. You've got guts, human, but you're going to regret this. As the brute turned away, John felt the eyes of the other inmates on him, some curious others calculating. He had made a statement, whether he intended to or not. He had shown that he wasn't going to be an easy target. Zarn looked up at John with a mixture of fear and gratitude. Thank you, it said, its voice trembling. You didn't have to do that, John shrugged. No one deserves to be bullied. Just be careful. Zarn nodded and scurried away, clutching its device. John watched it go, a sense of unease settling over him. He had made a move but he wasn't sure yet if it was the right one. 
The rules of this place were still a mystery, and he had a lot to learn if he was going to survive. Hey, human, a gravelly voice called out. John looked up to see three hulking aliens blocking his path. The leader was a massive, tusked beast with gray skin and small, beady eyes that glinted with malice. His two companions, equally intimidating, flanked him with menacing glares. You're in our territory, the leader growled, his tusks clicking together as he spoke. Give us your food. John glanced at the tray in his hands, filled with the same tasteless gruel everyone else was eating. I don't want any trouble. You can have it, he said, extending the tray towards them. The leader slapped the tray out of John's hands, sending it clattering to the floor. We don't want your food, he sneered. We want to see if you can fight. Before John could react, the leader's fist shot out, slamming into his face with the force of a sledgehammer. John staggered backward, his vision swimming and the metallic taste of blood filling his mouth. He caught himself before he fell, blinking away the stars in his eyes. The mess hall fell silent as the other inmates turned to watch, their expressions a mix of curiosity and anticipation. John knew he couldn't afford to show any weakness. Drawing on his military training, he took a defensive stance, fists raised and ready. Come on then, he said, his voice steady despite the pain. The leader charged at him, swinging his massive fists. John ducked under the first blow and rolled to the side, landing a solid punch to the alien's gut. The leader roared in pain and swung again, but John was already moving, his movements quick and precise. He dodged another punch and aimed a kick at the leader's knee, causing the alien to stumble. John followed up with a series of rapid punches to the alien's torso, each strike calculated and powerful. The leader bellowed in rage, but John didn't let up, using his smaller size to his advantage. The fight was intense, with the leader's brute strength clashing against John's speed and agility. John landed blow after blow, his training guiding his movements with a precision that surprised even him. Despite the pain and the odds, he fought with a determination born from years of military service and the will to survive. Finally, the leader swung a wild punch that John ducked under, and with all his strength, John delivered a powerful uppercut to the alien's jaw. The leader staggered back, eyes wide with shock, before collapsing to the ground unconscious. The mess hall erupted in murmurs and whispers. John stood over the fallen leader, panting and bruised but victorious. The two companions of the leader hesitated, then backed away slowly, clearly intimidated by John's unexpected prowess. The guards, who had been watching the fight unfold, finally intervened. They dragged the unconscious leader away, while John stood there trying to catch his breath. He could feel the eyes of the other inmates on him, a mixture of respect and curiosity replacing the earlier contempt. One of the guards, a tall, robotic-looking being with a mechanical voice, approached John. You're coming with us, it said, its voice devoid of emotion. John nodded, not resisting as they led him away. He knew he had made a statement, but he also knew he had a lot more to learn about the rules of this place. The door hissed open, and a tall, slender alien with pale blue skin and elongated features entered the room. It wore a uniform that marked it as a high-ranking official, and its eyes studied John with a mixture of curiosity and amusement. Quite a show you put on back there, human, the alien said, its voice smooth and slightly mocking. I'm Warden Zylar. It seems you have some skill. John met Zylar's gaze without flinching. I didn't come here to cause trouble, he said, but I'm not going to be anyone's punching bag. Zylar nodded slowly. A commendable attitude, but one that can get you killed in this place. You've made enemies, and they won't forget what you did today. John's jaw tightened. I'll deal with whatever comes my way. The warden's lips curled into a slight smile. We shall see. For now, you'll be returned to your cell. But remember, this place has its own rules, and you'd do well to learn them quickly. John was escorted back to his cell, his mind racing with the implications of the warden's words. He knew he had to be careful, but he also knew that he couldn't show weakness. The other inmates would be watching, and any sign of fear could be fatal. Back in his cell, John spent the next few days recovering from the fight and observing his surroundings even more closely. He noted the routines of the guards, the interactions between different groups of inmates, and the subtle power dynamics at play. He needed allies, 
and he needed to understand who he could trust. His opportunity came sooner than he expected. One evening, as he was lying on his bunk, he heard a commotion outside his cell. He got up and peered through the bars, seeing a group of inmates gathered around Zarn, the small, wiry alien he had defended earlier. The same brute from the mess hall, now sporting a bandaged jaw, was back and looking for revenge. You think you're safe because of your friend, Zarn? The brute snarled. Think again. John's fists clenched. He couldn't just stand by and watch. He stepped out of his cell and made his way toward the group. Leave him alone, he said, his voice carrying an edge of warning. The brute turned, a sneer forming on his face. You again? Didn't you learn your lesson last time? John stood his ground, his eyes locked on the brute. I don't back down, not then, not now. The brute growled and lunged at John, but this time John was ready. He sidestepped the attack and delivered a quick, sharp punch to the brute's ribs. The alien grunted in pain, but John didn't let up. He followed with a series of rapid strikes, each one aimed at a vulnerable spot. The fight drew the attention of other inmates who formed a circle around them, watching with rapt interest. John could feel their eyes on him, but he blocked it out, focusing solely on the brute in front of him. With a final powerful kick, John sent the brute crashing to the ground. The alien lay there, gasping for breath and unable to get up. John stood over him, breathing hard, but unyielding. You've made your point, the brute wheezed, clutching his side. I won't bother you again. John nodded, stepping back as the crowd began to disperse. Zarn looked up at him with a mixture of fear and gratitude. Thank you, he said, his voice trembling. Just stay out of trouble, John replied, turning to leave. As he walked away, he could feel the shift in the atmosphere. The other inmates watched him with a new respect, and he knew he had taken an important step in establishing himself in this place. But he also knew that the challenges were far from over, and he would need to stay vigilant if he was going to survive. In the days following his confrontation with the brute, John noticed a significant change in the way the other inmates treated him. While many still regarded him with a mix of suspicion and caution, a few began to approach him, testing the waters of potential alliances. One evening, as he sat in the corner of the common area, a small, wiry alien with large, inquisitive eyes cautiously approached him. Impressive fight, the alien said, its voice a high-pitched whisper. Name's Zarn, and I think we can help each other. John looked up, recognizing the alien he had defended. Zarn, right? What do you have in mind? Zarn glanced around nervously before speaking. There are alliances in this place, groups that stick together to survive. You need friends to make it here, and I can introduce you to some allies. In exchange, we could use your protection. John considered the offer. He knew he needed allies, and Zarn seemed resourceful. All right, let's talk. Zarn led John to a secluded corner of the common area, where a small group of inmates had gathered. There was Kriva a muscular, blue-skinned warrior with a fierce demeanor. Vrax, a cunning insectoid strategist whose multifaceted eyes gleamed with intelligence. And Lyra, a tech-savvy engineer with quick fingers and a sharp mind. We've been watching you, Kriva said, her voice a low, rumbling growl. You can handle yourself in a fight. We could use someone like you. John nodded. I'm interested. What's the plan? Vrax leaned in, his mandibles clicking softly as he spoke. We need to take down the dominant gang. They control the resources and the guards turn a blind eye. If we can weaken them, we can level the playing field. John listened intently, understanding the gravity of the situation. And how do we do that? Kriva grinned, a fierce light in her eyes. With brains and brawn, we hit them where it hurts and make allies along the way. The group quickly began to devise a strategy. Zarn provided crucial information about the gang's operations and schedules, while Vrax used this intelligence to map out their weak points. Lyra worked on hacking into the jail systems to gain further advantages, and Kriva organized training sessions to prepare for the upcoming confrontations. We'll start with a storeroom they control, Vrax explained, pointing to a detailed layout he had sketched on the floor. It's lightly guarded, but it holds significant supplies. Taking it will not only provide us with resources, but also send a message. John nodded, absorbing the plan. And what's my role? 
Kriva slapped him on the back, nearly knocking him over. You and I will lead the charge. We need to move quickly and quietly. Get in, take what we need, and get out before they can react. As the group finalized their preparations, John felt a sense of determination settle over him. This wasn't just about survival anymore. It was about taking control and making a stand. He trained alongside Kriva and the others, honing his skills and learning the intricacies of alien combat techniques. The night of the raid arrived. The group moved through the shadows of the jail, avoiding patrols and security cameras thanks to Lyra's hacking. When they reached the storeroom, John and Kriva took point, neutralizing the guards with swift, silent takedowns. Inside, they found shelves stocked with food, tools, and other supplies. They worked quickly, loading up as much as they could carry. Just as they were about to leave, an alarm blared. Damn it, Lyra hissed, her fingers flying over her makeshift device. Someone triggered the silent alarm. We've got company. Move, John shouted, grabbing as many supplies as he could and leading the way out. The group fought their way through the corridors, their path blocked by gang members responding to the alarm. John and Kriva took the lead, their combined strength and combat skills cutting a swath through their opponents. Zarn and Vrax provided support, picking off attackers from the rear. They reached the safety of their hideout, panting and bruised but victorious. The raid had been a success, despite the close call. They had secured valuable supplies and dealt a significant blow to the gang's operations. We did it, Kriva said, clapping John on the shoulder. We're one step closer to taking control. John nodded, feeling a sense of accomplishment, but he knew this was only the beginning. The gang would retaliate, and they needed to be ready. They had made their first strike, but the real battle was just beginning. The successful raid on the storeroom marked a turning point for John and his new allies. Their newfound resources gave them a significant advantage, and their morale was high. However, they knew that their enemies would not sit idly by. We need to move fast, Vrax said, his multifaceted eyes scanning the layout he had drawn. The gang will retaliate soon, and we need to be prepared. John nodded. What's our next target? The armory, Lyra replied, her fingers dancing over her device. If we can get our hands on better weapons, we can defend ourselves more effectively. Kriva grinned. I like the sound of that. Let's hit them where it hurts. They planned their next move meticulously gathering intelligence and rehearsing their actions. The armory was heavily guarded, but Lyra managed to disable some of the security systems, creating a narrow window of opportunity. The night of the raid, John and Kriva led the charge once again, with Zarn and Vrax providing backup. They moved with precision, taking out guards silently and efficiently. As they approached the armory, John felt a rush of adrenaline. This was a high-risk mission but the rewards were worth it. Inside the armory, they found an array of advanced weapons and armor. They quickly began gathering as much as they could carry, knowing that time was against them. Just as they were about to leave, the alarm blared, louder and more insistent than before. We need to get out now, Lyra shouted, her device crackling with the effort of holding off the security systems. John and Kriva led the way, blasting through the remaining guards with their newly acquired weapons. The fight was fierce, with the gang members pouring in from all directions. John's training and combat experience shone through as he took down opponents with calculated precision. As they neared their escape route, a group of gang members blocked their path. You're not going anywhere, the leader snarled, his face twisted with rage. John didn't hesitate. He charged forward, his weapon blazing, and Kriva followed suit. They fought with everything they had their determination and teamwork overpowering their enemies. Finally, they broke through the blockade and made it back to their hideout, battered but triumphant. The gang's retaliation came swiftly and brutally. They launched a massive assault on John's faction, catching them off guard in the middle of the night. The air was filled with the sounds of battle, blasts from energy weapons, the clash of metal, and the shouts of combatants. John woke to chaos, the walls of their hideout shaking from the force of the attack. Everyone to arms, he shouted, grabbing his weapon and rushing to join the fight. The battle was intense, with the gang members pouring in through every entrance. John fought side by side with Kriva, their coordinated efforts keeping the attackers at bay. Zarn and Vrax provided support, 
using their skills to disable enemy weapons and create diversions. Despite their best efforts, they were heavily outnumbered. John could see the desperation in his allies' eyes, but he refused to give in. Hold the line, he shouted, rallying the fighters around him. As the battle raged on, it became clear that they needed reinforcements. Just when all seemed lost, a group of inmates who had been on the fence about joining John's faction appeared, drawn by the sounds of the fight and the chance to change the balance of power. We're with you, one of them shouted, raising his weapon and joining the fray. With the reinforcements, the tide began to turn. John fought with renewed vigor, his every move driven by the need to protect his allies and take down the gang once and for all. The gang members, seeing their advantage slip away, began to falter. John faced off against the gang leader once more, their previous encounters adding fuel to the fire. The leader was stronger and more desperate, but John's determination and strategic thinking gave him the edge. They clashed in a brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat, each strike filled with the fury of their rivalry. Finally, with a powerful uppercut, John sent the gang leader crashing to the ground, unconscious. The remaining gang members hesitated, then fled, leaving their leader behind. The battle was over. John stood amidst the wreckage, panting and bruised but victorious. The other inmates looked to him with a newfound respect and admiration. They had seen his strength and leadership firsthand, and they knew that he was the key to their survival and eventual escape. We did it, Kriva said, clapping John on the back. We broke them. John nodded, his eyes scanning the aftermath of the battle. This is just the beginning. We need to fortify our position and prepare for whatever comes next. As they began to regroup and tend to their wounded, John felt a sense of accomplishment. They had taken a significant step towards changing the balance of power in the galactic jail. But he knew that their fight was far from over. The gang was broken, but there would be other challenges, other enemies to face. For now, they had won a crucial victory, and John had proven himself as a leader. He would continue to fight, to protect his allies, and to find a way out of this place. Together, they would face whatever challenges lay ahead. With the gang leader defeated and their immediate threat neutralized, John and his allies began to establish a new order within the galactic jail. The storeroom raid and the subsequent victory had significantly boosted their resources and morale. John knew they had to act quickly to consolidate their power. We need to secure more territory, John said, during a strategy meeting in their hideout. The group was gathered around a makeshift table, maps and plans spread out before them. Kriva nodded in agreement. We should focus on the areas that control essential supplies, food, water, medical kits. If we control those, we control the jail. Lyra tapped her device, displaying a holographic map. I've identified key locations we can target next. There's a water purification station and a medical supply depot. Both are lightly guarded now that the gang is in disarray. Vrax added, We also need to establish alliances with other factions. Not everyone will join us outright, but we can negotiate terms that are beneficial for both sides. John listened carefully, recognizing the importance of each suggestion. All right, we'll split into teams. Kriva and I will take a group to secure the water station. Lyra, you and Vrax handle the medical depot. Zarn, start reaching out to potential allies and see who's willing to talk. The plan was set in motion. John and Kriva led their team through the dimly lit corridors of the jail, moving swiftly and silently. They encountered minimal resistance at the water purification station. The few guards present were easily subdued, and soon they had control of the facility. Back at the hideout, Lyra and Vrax returned with similar success. They had managed to secure the medical supply depot, bringing back valuable supplies that would help treat their wounded and strengthen their position. Zarn reported back with promising news. I've spoken to a few leaders of smaller factions. They're interested in forming an alliance, but they want guarantees of protection and resources. John nodded. We can offer that. The more allies we have, the stronger we become. Set up a meeting with them, and we'll work out the details. As the days passed, John's faction grew in strength and numbers. They established a network of allies and controlled key resources, creating a semblance of order and stability in the chaotic environment of the jail. 
The other inmates began to look to John for leadership, recognizing his ability to protect and provide for them. We're making progress, Kriva said one evening as they reviewed their expanding territory. The gang's remnants are scattered and leaderless. We've got a real chance to change things here. John agreed, feeling a sense of accomplishment. But we can't get complacent. We need to keep pushing forward, keep securing more areas and building alliances. This place will never be safe, but we can make it better. The success of their recent operations had emboldened John and his allies, but it had also drawn the attention of the remaining gang members and the prison authorities. They knew a significant counterattack was inevitable, and they needed to prepare. We fortified our positions as best as we can, Lyra reported during a council meeting, but we need more than just defenses. We need a plan to deal with the next big assault. Vrax suggested we should set traps and ambushes around our key areas, make it costly for them to attack us. We also need to be ready to strike back immediately once they're weakened. John nodded, appreciating the tactical insight. Good. Let's get to work on those traps and prepare for a counteroffensive. Everyone needs to be ready at a moment's notice. Their preparations paid off sooner than expected. Late one night, a massive force of gang members, bolstered by rogue guards, launched a coordinated assault on their territory. The initial attack was fierce, with explosions and gunfire echoing through the corridors. John rallied his fighters, moving quickly to implement their defensive strategies. They led the attackers into carefully laid traps, where hidden explosives and ambushes decimated the enemy's ranks. The battle was intense and chaotic, but John's faction fought with a determination and unity that their enemies lacked. During the height of the battle, John found himself facing a squad of heavily armed guards. Using his combat skills, he maneuvered through their ranks, disarming and incapacitating them one by one. Kriva and Vrax fought alongside him, their combined efforts turning the tide of the fight. As the enemy forces began to retreat, John knew they couldn't let them regroup. Now's our chance. Push forward and take the fight to them, he shouted, leading the charge into enemy-held territory. The counteroffensive was swift and decisive. John and his allies stormed the gang's strongholds, dismantling their operations and capturing key leaders. The remaining gang members, demoralized and leaderless, surrendered or fled. The victory was complete, and the balance of power had shifted definitively in John's favor. The other inmates, witnessing the downfall of the once dominant gang, rallied behind John, recognizing him as their de facto leader. We did it, Lyra said, her voice filled with awe and relief. We've taken control. John looked around at his allies, their faces reflecting a mix of exhaustion and triumph. This is just the beginning, he said. We've proven that we can stand up and fight, but now we need to build something better. We need to create a system that ensures everyone's safety and fair treatment. The aftermath of the battle marked a turning point for the Galactic Jail. John and his allies worked tirelessly to establish a new order, one based on cooperation and mutual respect. They negotiated peace treaties with other factions, ensuring a stable and unified community. John's leadership and vision transformed the jail from a place of fear and chaos into a structured and relatively peaceful environment. But he never forgot his ultimate goal, to find a way to escape and return home. With the gang dismantled and their control over key resources established, John and his allies focused on creating a sustainable and fair system within the galactic jail. The new order they envisioned required careful planning and cooperation from all factions. We need representatives from each group, John said during a council meeting. A council that can make decisions for the benefit of everyone, not just a select few. Kriva, now a trusted lieutenant, agreed. It's the only way to maintain order and prevent another power vacuum. Zarn, who had become an invaluable advisor, suggested, We should also establish roles based on skills. Let those who are good at farming handle the food supplies, those with medical knowledge oversee the clinic, and so on. The idea was met with approval, and the council was formed. Each faction elected a representative, ensuring that every group had a voice in the new governance. The council meetings were held regularly, with John as the unofficial leader, 
guiding discussions and mediating conflicts. Lyra worked tirelessly to improve living conditions, using her technical expertise to repair and upgrade the jail's infrastructure. She hacked into the mainframe to restore basic utilities like clean water and functional lighting. Vrax used his strategic mind to organize defense and patrol schedules, ensuring the safety of their newfound society. One of the first issues the Council tackled was food distribution. With the storeroom now under their control, they implemented a fair rationing system. No longer did inmates have to fight for scraps. Everyone received an equal share. We're making progress, Kriva said one evening as they walked through the corridors, now safer and better lit. People are starting to trust each other again. John nodded. But we can't stop here. We need to keep improving and make sure that trust is justified. The next project was education. Zarn suggested creating classes to teach inmates basic skills, reading, writing, and even some vocational training. Knowledge is power, Zarn said. If we can educate people, we can give them a future. The classes were a huge success. Inmates who had once been hostile or indifferent began to show interest, realizing that they could better themselves even within the confines of the jail. The transformation was gradual but undeniable. The galactic jail, once a place of fear and violence, was becoming a community where people could live with dignity and hope. John's leadership and the collective effort of his allies had created something remarkable. Despite the progress they had made, John never lost sight of his ultimate goal, escaping the galactic jail and returning home. With their society stabilizing, he and his core team began to focus on the escape plan. We have control over many key systems now, Lyra said during a secret meeting in their hideout, but breaking out of here will require more than just hacking a few doors. John leaned forward, his expression determined. We need a ship, and we need to disable the security measures that would prevent us from leaving the planet. Vrax, ever the strategist, outlined the plan. There's a small hangar used for supply ships. It's heavily guarded, but it's our best shot. We can't just take the ship. We need to make sure the defense systems won't shoot us down the moment we're airborne. Zarn added, I've been gathering information on the guard schedules and the layout of the hangar. We can time our move when security is at its weakest. The plan was risky, but it was their only chance. They spent weeks preparing, gathering supplies, and training a select group of inmates who were committed to the escape. Finally, the day came. Under the cover of darkness, John, Kriva, Lyra, Vrax, and a handful of trusted allies made their way to the hangar. Lyra's hacking skills proved invaluable as she disabled the initial security systems, allowing them to enter the hangar undetected. Inside, they found the ship, a small cargo vessel that would be just enough to get them off the planet. But as they began their final preparations, an alarm sounded. We've been detected, Vrax shouted, drawing his weapon. Guards poured into the hangar, and a fierce battle erupted. John and his team fought with everything they had, their determination fueled by the hope of freedom. Kriva's strength and combat skills were crucial, holding off the guards, while Lyra worked frantically to finalize the ship's launch sequence. We're almost there, Lyra called out, her fingers flying over the controls. John covered her, taking down guards with precise shots. The situation was dire but they had come too far to fail now. With a final surge, they managed to get everyone on board. Strap in, John shouted as he took the pilot's seat. This is going to be rough. The ship roared to life, lifting off the ground as guards fired desperately at them. Lyra had managed to disable the external defense systems just in time, and they blasted out of the hangar, breaking free of the planet's atmosphere. As the stars filled the viewports, a cheer went up from the crew. They had done it they were free. John set a course away from the jail, his heart pounding with a mix of relief and anticipation. We've escaped, he said, looking at his friends. But we're not safe yet. We need to find a place to regroup and figure out our next move. Kriva grinned. Wherever we go, we'll face it together. John smiled, feeling a sense of camaraderie and hope. They had escaped the galactic jail, but their journey was just beginning. Together, they would face whatever challenges lay ahead, united by their shared determination and newfound freedom. The escape from the galactic jail had been a success, but John knew they were far from safe. 
As the cargo ship sped away from the planet, he kept a vigilant eye on the sensors, watching for any signs of pursuit. We need a place to lay low and regroup, Lyra said, her voice tense but focused as she worked on the ship's systems. Vrax leaned over her shoulder, studying the readouts. There's an asteroid belt nearby. We can hide there and make repairs. John nodded. Set a course. Everyone else, check the ship for damage and gather anything useful. The crew moved swiftly, their training and discipline evident as they worked together. Kriva and Zarn inspected the ship's hull, patching up any breaches, while Lyra and Vrax focused on the navigation and communication systems. John piloted the ship, guiding it into the dense asteroid field. Once they found a suitable hiding spot, they powered down the ship to avoid detection. The crew gathered in the main hold, the weight of their situation settling in. We've made it this far, John said, addressing his friends, but we need to stay sharp. The prison authorities will come after us, and we need to be ready. Kriva cracked her knuckles. Let them come. We're ready for them. Zarn nodded. We need to figure out our next move. We can't stay here forever. Lyra tapped her device, bringing up a star map. I've been monitoring communications. There's a nearby spaceport that we can reach without attracting too much attention. We can resupply and gather more intel there. John agreed. All right. We'll head to the spaceport once we've made the necessary repairs. Stay alert and be ready to move at a moment's notice. The next few days were tense but productive. The crew worked tirelessly to repair the ship and plan their next steps. They knew that every second counted, and they couldn't afford to let their guard down. As they approached the spaceport, John's crew prepared for the possibility of a confrontation. The spaceport was a bustling hub of activity, filled with ships and travelers from all corners of the galaxy. It was the perfect place to blend in and gather information, but it was also fraught with danger. We need to be discreet, Vrax advised. We don't know who might be looking for us. They docked the ship and split into smaller groups, each tasked with specific objectives. John and Kriva went to find supplies, while Lyra and Vrax sought out information on their pursuers. As John and Kriva moved through the crowded marketplace, they kept their heads down and their eyes open. They gathered food, medical supplies, and parts for the ship, all the while scanning the crowd for any signs of trouble. Meanwhile, Lyra and Vrax discovered troubling news. The prison authorities have put a bounty on our heads, Lyra said, her expression grim. They're offering a significant reward for our capture. Vrax nodded. We need to be ready for an attack. They'll come after us with everything they have. Their fears were confirmed when they returned to the ship. A squad of heavily armed bounty hunters was waiting for them. The ensuing battle was intense and chaotic, with blaster fire and explosions echoing through the spaceport. John fought with a fierce determination, using every ounce of his training to protect his crew. Kriva's brute strength and combat skills were invaluable, as she took down enemies with powerful, precise strikes. Lyra and Vrax provided crucial support, using their technical skills to hack into the bounty hunter systems and turn their own weapons against them. Despite the overwhelming odds, John's crew managed to hold their ground, they fought with a unity and resolve that came from their shared experiences and the bonds they had formed. As the last of the bounty hunters fell, John knew they had won a significant victory. We need to get out of here before more of them arrive, he said, his voice steady despite the adrenaline coursing through him. They quickly gathered their supplies and boarded the ship, blasting off from the spaceport and heading for the relative safety of open space. With the immediate threat behind them, John and his crew could finally take a moment to breathe. They had escaped the galactic jail, defeated their pursuers, and secured their freedom. But they knew their journey was far from over. As they navigated through space, they gathered in the ship's main hold to discuss their next steps. We can't keep running forever, Kriva said. We need a plan. John nodded. Agreed. We need to find a place where we can lay low and start building a new life. Lyra brought up a holographic map of the galaxy. There are fringe worlds where we might be able to settle. Places that are off the radar of the prison authorities. Vrax added, We also need to think about the long term. We have the skills and the knowledge to help others. We could start a new community. A place where people can live without fear. 
John considered their options, feeling a sense of hope and determination. We've come this far together. We faced impossible odds and emerged stronger for it. Wherever we go, we'll face it together.